Lecture 14. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Virtual University's course on Business and Technical Communication. In today's lesson, we will look at revising business messages. In this lecture, you will learn to edit your messages for content and organizational style and readability. Uh, you'll also learn to choose the most correct and most effective words to make your point. You'll learn to rewrite the sentences, to clarify the relationships amongst the ideas, and to make your writing interesting. In this lecture, you will also learn to identify the elements of paragraphs, uh, choosing the best design for written documents, how to rewrite paragraphs using the appropriate development techniques, and how to proofread your messages for mechanics and format. First of all, look at how you will edit your message. Once you've written, a, we, in previous lectures, we talked about planning a message and composing it. And in this lecture, uh, in, the, in how to revise your message, the first and foremost thing is the editing of your uh, business message. When you're editing anything, you will look, for, uh, look at the content and the organization. You will see what is included in the message and how that the ideas are organized. Now, when you're doing that, you need to stick to the point and make sure that you have expressed the main idea in the first paragraph. This is something that you really need to focus on. Jo aapka main idea hai, wo pehle paragraph mein hi aana chahiye, taake padhne walon ko pehla paragraph padte hi andaza ho jaye ke baaki text ke andar kya uh, uh, mazoo kya hoga. So when revising, make sure that the main idea is in the first paragraph. Also, you need to make sure that the uh, key features of your stance are highlighted in the middle paragraphs. So, the middle paragraphs are highlighted in the middle paragraphs. You have to highlight what your stance is, what you want to do. The other important thing is that when you are editing, you have to see that the redundancies are not going to happen. You will eliminate anything that is redundant, anything that is extra, you will delete that. जो भी चीजें आपको आ, अपना मैसेज दूसरी बार पढ़ने पे लगे कि ये चीजें फालतू हैं इनको शायद यहां नहीं होना चाहिए या इनके इंक्लूड करने से मैसेज में कोई इफेक्टिवनेस में मैसेज की इफेक्टिवनेस में कोई इजाफा नहीं हो रहा तो बेहतर है कि उन चीजों को मैसेज से निकाल दिया जाए स्पेशली अगर कोई आपको ऐसी चीज बात लगे कि रिपीटेशन हो रही है तो फिर तब भी उसको निकाल दें और अगर आपको लगे कि कोई चीज हम मैंने फालतू लिख दी है और इसका uh, कोई ताल्लुक नहीं है मैसेज से या इसके होने से मैसेज के मैसेज में कोई बेहतरी नहीं हो रही तब भी उसको हटा दें वहां से अनदर थिंग दैट यू विल लुक एट इज द स्टाइल एंड रीडेबिलिटी व्हेन वी टॉक ऑफ स्टाइल वी वन थिंग दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इज द यू एटीट्यूड हाउ यू हैव वर्डेड योर सेंटेंसेस वेदर यू हैव द यू एटीट्यूड और नॉट वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट द यू एटीट्यूड अर्लियर व्हिच मींस कीपिंग द रीडर इन माइंड एंड uh, keeping in mind their needs. It also means using the pronoun you. And we have talked about that the you pronoun is used to be 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 uh, so, uh, if you have uh, written a message which has less of the you attitude, then you need to reword it to stress the you attitude. If you feel that you have used too much of the you pronoun and the message is negative, then you need to reword it as well. Also, you will clarify relationships amongst ideas through the placement and combination of phrases. Jo bhi different ideas mein aapas mein relationships hain, aap unko clarify karenge unko strengthen karenge aur wo strengthen karne ka tarika ye hai ki jo aapke ideas hain jo aapke jis tarah aapne phrases ko aur ideas ko place kiya hai apne sentence ke andar usko aap aage piche kar sakte hain kuch aise hai ki phrases ideas aap pehle likhenge stress dene ke liye kuch phrases ideas aap baad mein likhenge unpe se stress hatane ke liye to isliye unki aapas mein jo relationship hai wo isi placement se determine hogi also, when you are uh, looking at editing your message, you need to look for the, uh, in, the t in the tone that you use, you need to look for the enthusiasm, 
have you used an enthusiastic enough tone or not. Also, if you feel that the uh, tone is too enthusiastic, then you need to moderate it. If you feel that your tone is very enthusiasm, then you will to reduce it. और अगर लव्स आपने इस तरह के इस्तेमाल किए हुए हैं जो बहुत मुश्किल लग रहे हैं आपका यह ख्याल है कि शायद पढ़ने वाले को मुश्किल लगे तो उनको भी आप हटा के उनकी जगह आसान अल्फाज इस्तेमाल करें सो यू विल एलिमिनेट वर्ड्स दैट सीम अनफेमिलियर इवन टू यू एंड बिकॉज़ ऑफ द सीम अनफेमिलियर टू यू देन दे विल डेफिनेटली सीम अनफेमिलियर टू योर रीडर आल्सो यू नीड टू लुक एट द मैकेनिक्स एंड फॉर्मेट which means that you will uh, look at the uh, at how you have uh, included the words and the vocabulary if you have used uh, any abbreviated uh, words then you will spell them out whatever it is that you have whatever language you have used in your um, message you will make sure that it is clear and it is easy for the reader to understand so abbreviations will be spelled out to avoid any confusion now, once you've got, uh, planned your message, composed it, revised it, then try to leave it for a day or two, and so that you can better evaluate it. Because once, if you are reading something constantly, then a lot of the times you become blind to uh, the mistakes that you have made yourself. बहुत बार ये होता है कि हम एक चीज खुद लिखते हैं और उसको हम पढ़ते भी हैं, बार-बार पढ़ते हैं, लेकिन उसमें जो एक या दो गलतियां रह जाती हैं वो हमें नजर नहीं आती तो इसलिए बेहतर होता है कि उसको एक आध दिन के लिए छोड़ दें और फिर अगर आपके पास इतना टाइम है कि आप उसको एक आध दिन के लिए छोड़ सकते हैं तो बेहतर होगा कि आप उसको साइड पे रख दें और फिर एक आध दिन बाद या कुछ घंटों बाद उसको दोबारा देखें उसमें यह होता है कि कई बार आपको जो मिस्टेक पहले बार-बार पढ़ने पे नजर नहीं आ रही होती वो आपको ऑब्वियस हो जाती है सो ट्राई टू रिव्यू योर मैसेज फॉर द कंटेंट फॉर द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन you come back to whatever message it is you come back to it with a fresh perspective if you if you review it after a gap also uh, if you're looking at it from a fresh perspective then you can judge whether there's a good balance between the general and the specifics uh, also if uh, you can see if you've provided enough support for your ideas jo aapne ke ideas hain unke sath aapne minor points evidence lagai hai wo kafi hai ya nahi hai and also, uh, you can uh, you you will ensure if you've double checked your facts and figures. That is something that's important. If you're using facts and figures, then you need to double check them so that there is no room for error. कोई भी अगर आप figures बता रहे हैं, facts बता रहे हैं, ऐसी चीज़ बता रहे हैं जिसमें गलती का अंदेशा है, तो बेहतर है कि उसको आप check कर लें. Coming to style and readability. Style is the way you write and uh, how you come across to the reader. Uh, once you are satisfied with the structure, once you are satisfied with all the content and how it has been structured, then you will review your message for the style and the readability. Uh, style, as I said, one main factor of style is the tone that you use, the you attitude, whether you have the you attitude or not. Readability depends on word choice, sentence length, sentence structure, and physical appearance. Jo word choice hai, aapne kya alfaz istemal kiye hai, aapke sentences kitne lambe hai, ya chote hai, sentences ka structure kaisa hai, mushkil hai, asan hai, uski hamne ne pehle bhi baat ke bhi aage tubara baat karenge, or physical appearance aapke page ki or aapke message ki kaisi hai. Ye sab chizen jo hai, ye readability me aati hai, or readability asan honi chai ye, pandate me aapka message asan hona chai ye taake. Reader ko for, uh, usse um, uh, asani ho jo bhi us, aapne us, ye sare jo factors hain ye is tarah aap ist istemal kare ke reader ko koi dushwari pesh na aaye uh, talking about word choice the two key aspects of word choice are correctness and effectiveness you whatever language you use you have to make sure that you are actually putting across the correct message जो आप कहना चाह रहे हैं आपके जो अल्फाज आपने चूज किए हैं वो अल्फाज वही मैसेज आगे पहुंचा रहे हैं या कोई ऐसे अल्फाज आपने यूज किए हैं कि उनसे आपका जो मैसेज है वो दूसरे गलत तौर पे रीडर तक पहुंच रहा है तो फिर आपको उन अल्फाज को तब्दील करना होगा आल्सो इफेक्टिवनेस व्हिच मींस हैव आर द चोजन वर्ड्स एक्चुअली कन्वेइंग द मैसेज इन एन इफेक्टिव मैनर और नॉट जो अल्फाज आपने इस्तेमाल किए हैं वो 
इतने मुस्बत हैं कि जो आप कहना चाह रहे हैं वो बात इफेक्टिवली पहुंचे कई बार ये होता है कि बात आपकी करेक्टली तो पहुंच रही है लेकिन उसका इम्पैक्ट पढ़ने वाले पे नहीं हो रहा तो आपने ऐसे अल्फाज इस्तेमाल करने हैं जो सही भी हों और इफेक्टिव भी हों और अगर आपको लग रहा है कि शायद ये लफ्ज़ ठीक नहीं है या इसके लिए बेहतर मैं लफ्ज़ इस्तेमाल कर सकता हूँ तो फिर उसको चेक करें डिक्शनरी में देख लें उसको रिप्लेस कर लें कोई उसका सिनेम डाल लें या किसी से पूछ लें ताकि आपका जो सेंटेंस है वो और इफेक्टिव हो जाए फॉर एग्जाम्पल इंस्टेड ऑफ सेंग समिंग लाइक द डेटा ऑन आर मार्केट शेयर इज कंसिस्टेंट फ्राम रीजन टू रीजन यू विल यूज द डेटा ऑन आर मार्केट शेयर आर कंसिस्टेंट फ्राम रीजन टू रीजन द डिफरेंस इज ओनली चेंजिंग इज टू आर बट इट बिकम्स मोर इफेक्टिव इट बिकम्स मोर क्लियर बिकॉज विद वेन यू टॉक अबाउट डेटा यू विल यूज आर नॉट इज यू हैव टू कीप इन माइंड दैट प्लेन इंग्लिश is very close to spoken english and can be more easily understood so try to use simple language plain english in your uh, writing because that is simplest to uh, spoken english and that is what your reader will find easy to understand agar aap koshish karenge bahut mushkil bahut mote mote alfaz dalne ke apne message mein jo aam istemal mein nahi aate jo aam bolne mein nahi istemal hote to aapke padhne wale ko bhi mushkil hogi you will also um, make sure that you have the correct balance between functional words and content words functional words jab hum kehte hain to usme included hote hain conjunctions prepositions articles and pronouns these are functional words these are words that are expressing relationships amongst content words functional words wo hain jo content words ke darmiyan koi relationship dikhate hain aur content words वो हैं जो कि अब आपके जुमले के अंदर एक्चुअल आइडिया एक्सप्रेस करते हैं या ये पता चलता है कि किस चीज के बारे में बात हो रही है फॉर एग्जांपल सम ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑब्जर्वर्स ऑफ द बिस्किट मार्केट गिव रियो द एज इन क्वालिटी बट गाला इज लॉडेड फॉर सुपीरियर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन नाउ एज यू सी ऑन द स्क्रीन इन दिस एग्जाम्पल द कॉन्टेंट वर्ड्स आर इन आइटेलिक्स एंड द फंक्शन वर्ड्स आर थिंग्स लाइक ऑफ द बट for etc these are words if you look take them separately they have no meaning but when you put them in between content words they make the sentence complete so without them the sentence does not have any links you just have a lot of nouns and verbs but there is no connection also content words have both a denotative a dictionary meaning uh, and a connotative which is एसोसिएटिव मीनिंग तो जो कॉन्टेंट वर्ड्स हैं उनका डिक्शनरी वाला मीनिंग भी हो सकता है जो कि एक आप डिक्शनरी खोलें और उसमें फ़ौरन उसका आ, मतलब मिल जाए और दूसरा उसका एसोसिएटिव मीनिंग भी हो सकता है जो कि आम डिक्शनरी में ना मिले लेकिन उसको इस्तेमाल में हम आ, ऐसे चीज़ के लिए भी इस्तेमाल कर सकें उस लफ्ज़ को जिसका आम मतलब आम इस्तेमाल में वो ना आता, आता हो फॉर एग्ज़ाम्पल You may say I have uncovered some interesting dirt on the police officer and you may use the same word dirt as my land has fertile and dark dirt so in this example uh, in the second example it, you are using the denotative meaning of dirt the dictionary meaning which is actually that something which is dirty and uh, maybe uh, mud but in the first sentence i have just uncovered some interesting dirt on the police officer the word dirt is not being used in its dictionary sense it is being used in a in an associative sense so the both sentences are using dirt but in with different connotations the more abstract a word the more removed from the tangible objective world of things uh, it is so try to use words with uh, in their dictionary meaning rather than with their associative meaning koshish ye kare ki jo ek lafz ka denotative matlab hai jo dictionary wala matlab hai wo istemal kiya jaye na ke us lafz ka figurative ya associative kyunki agar aap ek lafz uske abstract matlab mein istemal karte hain to phir uske different meanings liye ja sakte hain banisbat iske ki aap ek lafz ko uske dictionary meaning mein istemal kare to phir usme koi confusion ki gunjaish nahi rehti try to rewrite the sen- sentence that you are going to see without using the words in italics and then things will become clearer for you the sentence says we hold these truths to be self evident that all men are created equal equal 
that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable uh, rights that amongst these are life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Now if you try rewriting the sentence without the words in italics, the meaning uh, or by changing the words in italics, the meaning can be completely changed. So uh, try to make sure that the words that you use are those that actually express uh, a very solid meaning rather than being vague. Uh, you have to think like a wordsmith. You have to use words that communicate. Wordsmiths are people who are concerned with being clear, concise and accurate in the use of language. So when you are editing your message, think like a wordsmith. Try to be clear, concise and accurate in the message rather than saying something which is so vague that the words substituted by any other words would make sense as well. अगर आप ऐसा मैसेज लिखेंगे कि उन में से कुछ अल्फाज को निकाल के कोई और अल्फाज भी डाल दें तो शायद जुमला जो है वो सही लगे लेकिन पैगाम बिल्कुल चेंज हो जाए तो वो फिर आपका मैसेज बहुत ही बहुत ही एब्स्ट्रैक्ट है इसलिए कोशिश करें कि ठोस अल्फाज इस्तेमाल करें जिनका एक्चुअली रिलेशनशिप हो बहुत क्लियर रिलेशनशिप हो बाकी आइडियाज के साथ जो कि उस मैसेज में इस्तेमाल किए जा रहे हैं वर्ब्स एंड नाउन्स आर मोर कॉन्ट्री concrete then adverbs and adjectives uh, if whatever verbs you are using the more dynamic and specific it is the better it is the the more dynamic and specific your sentence becomes so try to use more verbs action words more nouns naming words in your uh, sentences rather than adverbs and adjectives because adverbs and adjectives even if they are taken away the sentence does not lose much for example talking of weak and strong words weak words or phrases would be something like a wealthy businessman whereas you could substitute that for a strong word which would be tycoon similarly business prosperity sounds although it sounds long but it is weak a uh, more strong word would be boom uh, similarly hard times can be substituted for stronger word which would be slump also you will communicate best with words that are familiar to your reader and along with keeping in mind familiarity keep in mind that uh, words which are familiar to one reader may be unfamiliar to the uh, to another reader so you have to apart from uh, the familiarity you have to keep your audience in mind as well who is it that you're writing for and will this particular word be familiar to the particular audience that will be reading your uh, communication for example if you're using unfamiliar words like a certain the more familiar word which would be better to use would be find out learn also uh, words like consummate uh, would are best substituted by more familiar words like close or bring about peruse can be substituted by read or study these familiar words are closer to the audience they are more easy to understand and they will obviously make your message more effective and more readable also short words are usually more vivid than long ones and they improve the readability of a document if you're using very very long words it becomes difficult for the audience to read them and it becomes difficult for the audience to understand them jo lambe alfaz hote hain unko zara पढ़ के सोचना पड़ता है कि इनका मतलब क्या है जबकि शॉर्ट अल्फाज जो होंगे छोटे अल्फाज जो होंगे उनका मतलब जो है वो फौरन दिमाग में आ जाता है और उनका इमेज भी दिमाग में ज्यादा देर तक रहता है दे आर मोर विविड फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू से समथिंग लाइक ड्यूरिंग द प्रेसिडेंट ईयर द कंपनी एक्सिलेटेड प्रोडक्टिव ऑपरेशन इट्स देंटेंस साउंड इम्प्रेसिव बिकॉज इट्स गॉट अ लॉट ऑफ हैवी वर्ड्स इन इट बट the meaning is difficult to grasp par ke lagta to hai ke haan ji inko bahut angrezi bahut aati hai lekin uska jo matlab hai sentence mein wo shayad samajhne ke liye padhne wale ko do teen baar is jumle ko padhna padega iske banisbat if you write something like last year the company sped up operations the meaning is clear the sentence is shorter and the reader gets the message immediately the meaning is the same in both the sentences it's just that this one in the second sentence the uh, meaning has been expressed in a more concise and precise manner whereas in the first sentence the emphasis was more on using long words to impress the reader
also try to uh, turn whatever, uh, try to use verbs in their original sense because if you turn verbs into nouns and adjectives, your writing becomes weaker. So, do not camouflage your verbs, use them as they are as much as possible. Zahir hai, bahut jaga to aapko verb ko change karna hi hoga, lekin koshish ye karein ke jo verb hai, usko uski original form mein hi istamal kiya jaya. Watch for endings like ION, TION, ING, etc. Jo ke aapki screen pe aapko nazar a rahi hai. Ye jo verbs ki endings hai, ye verb ki form ko change karti hai. Aur in se jo sentence writing hai, wo zara si uh, unfamiliar ho jati hai, jo structure hai, wo mushkil ho jata hai. So, try to use verbs in their uh, simple form. Uh, Let us have a look at some examples. For example, if you say the manager undertook implementation of the rules, here you are camouflaging the verb implement by adding ION to it. It, might, it would be better to use, say the manager implemented the rules. Pehle mein aapne implementation ko noun bana diya. Here you are using uh, implement as a verb just by using the past tense. Uh, um, similarly, you can you, if you say verification of shipments occurs weekly, uh, here again you are adding, uh, you are changing it by um, adding TION. If you say shipments are verified weekly, the sentence becomes more direct, it becomes simpler to understand, the verb is actually used in verb form, not in noun form. Another aspect that is very important when you are editing your message or when you are revising your message is bias free language. You have to make sure that your message does not use any biased language. This we have talked about before and I am emphasizing this because you have a difference in the tone of your message and the message is received and perceived. The reader says that the reader says that the message is received and perceived. So, avoid a biased language that might offend the audience. Uh, try to avoid any type of cultural bias, uh, gender bias, racial and ethnic bias and disability bias. In charo ko leke, agar kisi kisam ka aapko lag raha hai ki in charo ya pancho mein se koi aapne lafz aise istemal kiya jin se audience ko takleef ho, to unko aap avoid kare. Agar koi culturally ya gender ke taur pe या racial, ethnic, disabled किसी भी तरह से आपको लगे कि आपके जो अल्फाज हैं वो किसी को दुख पहुंचाएंगे तो उसको कोशिश करें कि आप alternative अल्फाज इस्तेमाल करें। Let's have a look at some examples of gender bias. For example, if you say mankind, you are using the word only to include men and excluding women. So it might be preferable to say humanity or humankind. Humanity is more commonly used. Similarly, by saying man-made, you are again um, not including women in, in that. So, it would be better to say artificial or synthetic. Uh, similarly, manpower, it would be better to uh, substitute that by the words like workforce or human energy. Now, you see, in all these words, this gender bias is because in all these words, ko exclude kiya gaya hai. Uh, terminology say. For example, if you are talking about uh, children from Sindh who come from disadvantaged backgrounds, it might be better to delete the word Sindhi from your sentence because that would imply uh, that all children from Sindh are disadvantaged. It might be better to say children from lower income families. But this way you are not targeting any particular race, but you are talking about an income group. Similarly, uh, instead of saying something like Ali is an unusually tall Punjabi, it would be better to say Ali is tall because it really does not matter whether he is Punjabi or not or Sindhi or Balochi uh, or Pathan. You, what you are most interested in uh, telling the audience is that this boy is tall. So, you do not really need to include his ethnic uh, background. And also, if you are saying unusually tall, then you are implying that Punjabis are generally not tall. So, that shows a bias. So, it is better to uh, delete such adjectives and uh, um, verbs or nouns which indicate uh, some kind of disadvantage towards a particular ethnic or racial group. 
Similarly, uh, a lot of the times when we talk or write, we tend to forget about uh, that, that we are expressing some kind of a disability bias and we need to be very careful of that. Uh, it would be unacceptable to say something like crippled workers uh, face many barriers in their jobs. It would be, if you want to express the same idea, it would be better to say workers who have physical disabilities face many problems on the job. Substituting the word crippled by uh, pe uh, people who have physical disabilities sounds much better. It is more preferable, it is more acceptable because it shows uh, that you are aware of their problem, but you do not, uh, you are not talking of it negatively. As you edit your message, you will find yourself rewriting passages, you will find yourself rewriting sentences or even whole sections because you will uh, find that there are many, uh, many areas in your message that need to be changed, that need to be redrafted and if you need to do that, it's perfectly okay. If you feel that you have to write some sections again, when you are editing, you don't need to be panicked or panicked. This is a very normal phenomenon. It's very hard to write a message and we feel okay. When we look at it again, we have to see our mistakes again. And this is the reason why we are writing a message and revise a message so that we can improve it. So there is no need to be panicked or disheartened. If you have to rewrite it, you have to rewrite it in your different sections. That is the point of editing a message. That is what editing is all about. Uh, if you need feel that you need to rewrite uh, sentences, then they would probably be because the sentences are not effective enough. Effective sentences ko create karne ke liye, you will need to have uh, have a look at their structure. Uh, you will need to keep in mind that every sentence contains a subject, which would be a noun or a noun equivalent, and a predicate, which is a verb and related word. So, agar aapko lag raha hai ki aapke sentences mein subject or predicate nahi hai, to phir aapko us sentence ko rephrase karna hooga ki usme subject bhi aai or predicate bhi aai. Bohat baar yeh hota hai ki hum likh tete hai ek sentence or phir jab hum usko baad ne padhte hai to hume yeh andaza hota hai ki isme subject to koi pata hi nahi chal raha ke yeh action kya chiz perform kari hai, kaun perform kar raha hai. Ya yeh hai ki jo unki relationship hai, wo iti clear nahi hai ya emphasis itna clear nahi hai, to then we need to reword it or rewrite it. There are three types of sentences. Um, they are simple sentences, compound sentences and complex sentences. And to give your sentences variety, you will need to use all three types. In your messages, you will try to use three sentences so that your message is more effective and you will not have any variety in it. If you only write simple sentences in your message, it will feel very basic and very childish and the reader will be bored. If you only use complex sentences in your message, it will be more complicated and the meaning will not be very clear. So you will need to use a variety and a mixture of all three types of sentences. Maybe use complex and compound sentences to create, to express ideas and then use simple sentences to emphasize ideas as well. Let's have a look at the difference between these three types of sentences to quickly revise what they are. A simple sentence has a single subject and a single predicate. Ek subject hoga, ek predicate hoga, to ek simple sentence banega. For example, profits have increased in the past year. Profits is a subject, have increased is the predicate. Profits wo hai jo action kar rahe hai, have increased what is happening to the profits is the predicate, the verb. Or baki jo hai in the past year, those are, that's the related idea. Uh, a compound sentence expresses two or more independent related thoughts. Just tarang ke humne ek simple sentence mein dekha ke ek, ek independent thought tha compound sentence mein do independent thoughts honge side by side. Uh, for example, wage rates have declined by 5 percent. Ye to ek uh, subject ho gaya, ek predicate ho gaya. And employee turnover has been high. Isme ek or subject ho gaya, turnover or ek or predicate ho gaya, have been high. So, as you see, it's a compound sentence. There are two independent ideas. One idea is that rates have declined. The second idea is that turnover has been high. 
obviously they are related but they are each of them in their own right is a complete idea a complete thought aapas mein ye related hain but dependent nahi hain agar aap ek ko hata bhi denge to ek section jo hai sentence ka wo phir bhi uska matlab complete hoga uh, in a complex sentence there will be uh, one independent clause and one or more dependent clauses एक तो इंडिपेंडेंट क्लॉज ही होगा जिस तरह हमने सिंपल सेंटेंस में और कंपाउंड uh, सेंटेंसेस में देखा और एक या एक से ज़्यादा डिपेंडेंट क्लॉजेज होंगे डिपेंडेंट क्लॉजेज वो होंगे जो कि जिनको अगर अलग से देखा जाए तो उनका कोई मतलब नहीं कंप्लीट uh, मतलब नहीं बनेगा फॉर एग्जांपल ऑल दो यू मे क्वेश्चन एलिजिबिलिटीज कॉमा यू मस्ट एडमिट दैट हिज मॉरल्स आर स्ट्रॉन्ग नाउ इन दिस यू इज़ द सब्जेक्ट मस्ट एडमिट इज़ द प्रेडिकेट so you must admit that his morals are strong to ek independent clause ho gaya lekin although you may question ali's abilities is a dependent clause isko agar hum alag se padhe to iska koi matlab nahi banta so it's only when you combine the dependent and the independent that you get a complex sentence so try to uh, use all three types of sentences agar kyunki agar aapke sirf complex sentences honge ya sirf ek तरह के कंपाउंड होंगे या सिंपल uh, सेंटेंसेस होंगे तो वो आपका मैसेज बोरिंग भी लगेगा इन टर्म्स ऑफ इट्स रीडेबिलिटी और कॉम्प्रहेंसिबल भी नहीं होगा उसको समझना भी मुश्किल शायद हो जाए अगर ज़्यादा कंफ्यूजिंग है या बोरिंग हो जाए ऑल्सो लुकिंग एट सेंटेंस स्टाइल ट्राई टू ब्रेक द सेंटेंस इन इफ इट्स लॉन्ग ट्राई टू ब्रेक इट इन टू शॉर्टर वंस टू इम्प्रूव रीडेबिलिटी If you have uh, used too many passive sentences, try to convert some of them into active voice, because active sentences are stronger than passive sentences. अगर आप एक sentence को अगर आप सब sentences को passive तरीके से passive voice में लिखेंगे तो उनको समझना मुश्किल हो जाएगा और उनका effect ख़त्म हो जाएगा तो इसलिए आपको active sentences भी रखने हैं क्योंकि वो ज़्यादा strong होते हैं Also use passive sentences to soften uh, bad news. अगर कोई आपने बुरी खबर देनी है तो फिर आप पैसिव सेंटेंसेस इस्तेमाल कीजिए बिकॉज उससे ये होगा कि आप खुद बैकग्राउंड में आ जाएंगे एंड ऑल्सो uh, जो खबर है बुरी खबर है वो भी थोड़ी सी बैकग्राउंड में चली जाती है एंड ऑल्सो यू कैन क्रिएट अ मोर इम्पर्सनल टोन बाय यूजिंग पैसिव वॉइस सो यू विल नीड टू डिसाइड वेन यू आर रिवाइजिंग योर मैसेज you will need to make decisions about whether you want to keep a sentence in its uh, particular voice or you want to change it to active or passive as the case may be uh, for example um, the use of passive voice can be seen by this example if you say sales were increased by 32% last year this is a sentence in passive voice it would be uh, an improved way of saying the same thing would be sales improved by 32% last year बिकॉज इफ वैन यू से सेल्स वर इंक्रीज बाई थर्टी टू परसेंट लास्ट ईयर तो जो सेल्स की इंक्रीज है उसका इम्पैक्ट कम हो जाता है और कुछ ये इम्पैक्ट ज़्यादा हो जाता है कि किसी और ने उनको इंक्रीज किया इस, अगर आप उस, उसी बात को एक्टिव सेंटेंस में लिखते हैं सेल्स इम्प्रूव बाई थर्टी टू परसेंट लास्ट ईयर तो एम्फोसिस जो है वो इम्प्रूवमेंट के ऊपर आ जाता है और या इंक्रीज के ऊपर आ जाता है तो इसलिए सेंटेंस ज़्यादा इफेक्टिव हो जाता है वी टॉक अबाउट रिडेंडेंसीज अर्लियर Uh, eliminate any extra words unnecessary words and phrases be on the lookout for inefficient phrases koi aise phrases jo aapko lage ki apna matlab theek se nahi pura kar pa rahe hain ya inefficient hain jo inka jis wajah se inko include kiya gaya hai uh, sentence ya paragraph mein wo apna matlab nahi pura kar rahe hain to unko phir uh, hatayein ya unko change kare also redundancies as i said earlier any extra words Uh, which are present in your uh, message you need to remove those and unneeded relative pronouns and articles words that are not really necessary they are relative pronouns they are articles and they are extra you will need to reduce those so that the content words have more uh, strong uh, stronger meaning let's have a look at the use of articles and how uh, that can improve uh, a sentence a confusing uh, sentence would be the project manager told the engineer last week the specifications were changed a much better much clearer way of saying the same thing would be the project manager told the engineer last week that the specifications were changed so just by in including the word that your sentence becomes much stronger 
the links between the ideas become much more clearer. You will also, uh, when you are editing your message, need to emphasize key thoughts. Uh, look at your message, read it, see if whatever key thoughts, key ideas you have, see if they are actually being put across in an effective manner and if you feel that they are not, then you need to emphasize them. You will emphasize parts of a sentence by giving them more space, by putting them at the beginning or end of a sentence and by making them the subject of the sentence. So, in three ways, you have to give a sentence in which the different parts are given space زیادہ دیں ان کو زیادہ الفاظ میں ایکسپریس کریں یا ان کی جہاں جو سینٹنس کے جملے کے اندر ان کی جگہ ہے اس کو تبدیل کریں اس کو آئیڈیا کو شروع میں لے آئیں یا بعد میں لے آئیں اگر آپ کو لگے کہ شاید وہ زیادہ ایمفیسز مل جائے اس طرح یا ان کو سینٹنس کا سبجیکٹ بنا دیں لیٹس ہاو لوک ایٹ سینٹنس ان ایٹس لیس ایمفیٹک فارم اینڈ مور ایمفیٹک فارم فارم وچ ہیز لیس ایمفیسز اینڈ دین وی more emphasis. Uh, if you say something like we are cutting the price to stimulate demand, in this sentence the, there is no, uh, not much emphasis on what is happening and what the result will be, what it is that you really want to emphasize. Whereas if you say uh, to stimulate the demand we are cutting the price, here you have more emphasis on Uh, uh, the fact that demand will be stimulated and also the fact that price will be reduced. You apart from the sentence, you also need to look at your writing on a paragraph level when you are uh, editing it. Uh, you will need to develop coherent paragraphs. As we've talked about earlier, paragraphs are functional units that revolve around a single thought. You will try to make sure that every paragraph has one main idea, one single thought and everything in, the, in that paragraph is related to that thought and it's the everything in that paragraph is actually expressing or uh, expanding that thought. The elements of a paragraph are the topic sentence which expresses the main idea, what is being talked about in the paragraph, the related sentences, sentences which show some uh, relationship uh, be between themselves and to the topic and the transitional elements. Aise elements, aise cheez hain jo ke on related sentences ko aapas mein aur topic sentence se link kar rahi hain. Ye transitional elements, conjunctions ho sakte hain, prepositions ho sakte hain, etc. But basic, a lot of the times they are conjunctions. There are five ways to develop a coherent paragraph. You could develop a paragraph by the pattern of illustration, jis mein aap koi cheez illustrate kar rahe hain, koi cheez expand kar rahe hain. You could develop it by comparison and contrast, jis mein aap do cheezon ya do se zada cheezon ko aapas mein compare kar rahe hain ya contrast kar rahe hain. Or cause and effect, where you're showing that one thing caused another or one thing was caused by another. Or classification, where you are grouping uh, ideas together and actually talking about them and problems and solutions where you are talking about a problem and giving the solution for that problem, how it can be solved. So these are the, the five different ways in which paragraphs can be developed and if you keep broadly these patterns in mind, then it will be very easy for you to uh, revise your paragraphs and to make sure that if there's anything uh, within the paragraph which does not conform to the particular pattern that you have in mind then that idea should be uh, dealt with maybe in another paragraph. When you actually produce your document, uh, you have to make a lot of decisions about the design of the document. First of all, we have document ki content and idea of the ideas that are organized and what you have to say or what you have to use the ideas or language that you have to use in the way you have to do it. Now, we have to talk about the organization ki in terms of visuals کہ وہ دیکھنے میں کس طرح کی لگے گی اور اس سے آپ کے پڑھنے والے پہ کیا امپیکٹ آئے گا ڈیزائن ایلیمنٹس انکلوڈ وائٹ سپیس ہاؤ مچ آف دی ٹیکسٹ از فری آف آرٹ اینڈ آرٹ ورک ہاؤ مچ آف دی پیج از کورڈ بائی پرنٹ اٹ آلسو انکلوڈس ڈیزائن ایلیمنٹس آلسو انکلوڈ مارجنس اینڈ لائن جسٹیفیکیشنس how much how much space have you left uh, on the on each side of the page the left and the right is your page left justified or not uh, left justified and rugged right uh, side 
गिव्स दी डॉक्यूमेंट एन ओपन फीलिंग अगर आपका डॉक्यूमेंट जो है वो लेफ्ट जस्टिफाइड है जिसका मतलब कि आपकी सारी जो लेफ्ट साइड से मार्जिन के साथ से शुरू हो रहा है लेकिन राइट right साइड से कोई लाइन्स छोटी हैं कोई बड़ी हैं तो उससे आपका जो डॉक्यूमेंट है उसके ज़रा खुले इफेक्ट आता है बनस्बत इसके कि अगर आप अपने डॉक्यूमेंट को जस्टिफाई कर लें कि राइट साइड से भी सारी लाइंस बंद हैं एक एक ही लाइन एक ही जगह पे बंद हो रही हैं सेंटेंस के एंड में तो उससे आपका जो डॉक्यूमेंट है उसे ज़रा क्लोज्ड लुक आती है लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट एन इफेक्टिव पेज डिज़ाइन एंड एन इफेक्टिव पेज डिज़ाइन एज यू सी ऑन द फर्स्ट लाइड देर इज वेरी लिटिल वाइट स्पेस देर इज़ वेरी लिटिल स्पेस बिटवीन पैराग्राफ्स ऑल इट इज़ लेफ्ट जस्टिफाइड and the right side is rugged the lines are so close together that visually there is no impact whereas the same uh, text given on is given on the uh, page next to it and here as you see the page is drafted in such a way that there is more white space there are more spaces between different paragraphs or between sections of a paragraph uh, of of the message and, and the message is actually divided into sections with headings and numbers and this gives the message a more effective look and a more impressive look as well other design elements are headings and captions um, headings he help the reader quickly identify the content they help the reader locate specific information humne pichle example mein bhi dekha ke headings dene se page ki bhi effectiveness badh gayi aur आपको एक साथ हेडिंग पढ़ के ये अंदाज़ा हो गया कि ये टॉपिक क्या है और किस चीज़ की बात होगी इस पैराग्राफ में ऑल्सो दी टाइप फेस द फिज़िकल डिज़ाइन ऑफ द लेटर्स व्हाट द लेटर्स लुक लाइक इज इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड द टाइप स्टाइल्स आर आल्सो इम्पॉर्टेंट अवॉइड यूजिंग टाइप स्टाइल्स दैट स्लो योर रीडर्स डाउन बहुत से आप तो कंप्यूटर के ऊपर बहुत से टाइप स्टाइल्स हैं बहुत सी राइटिंग स्टाइल्स हैं जो पढ़ने में आसान है और बहुत से ऐसे हैं जो मुश्किल हैं तो जो भी टाइप फेस हो और जो टाइप स्टाइल हो वो ऐसा आप इस्तेमाल करें कि रीडर को पढ़ने में आसानी हो लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट सम एग्जांपल्स। दी सेल्फ टाइप फेस इज व्हाट यू सी इन द फर्स्ट बॉक्स ऑन द लेफ्ट हेयर यू इफ यू सी टाइम्स वी हैव टाइम्स रोमन दिस इज ऑफन यूज फॉर टेक्स्ट सो इफ यू राइटिंग अ लॉन्ग टेक्स दैन Time, times Roman is the most common form of uh, typeface used. Uh, also, Times Roman is uh, harder to read if it's all capital. So try to avoid capital letters in Times Roman. Uh, Helvetica, on the other hand, is often used for headings, and if you use it in capitals, then Helvetica is a cleaner face to use than Times Romans. So in your text, you will try to use. time romans and in your headings especially if they are in capital uh, form then you will use a helvetica as far as your design decisions are concerned for effective design try to pay attention to consistency that the same type of design should be used across all pages of the message and in all sections of the message use the same type of headings the same uh, give the same amount of spacing between paragraphs ye na ho ki aapne ke पहले सेक्शन में तो पैराग्राफ्स के अंदर एक एक लाइन की स्पेसिंग है और अगले सेक्शन में पैराग्राफ्स के दरमियान स्पेसिंग है ही नहीं या आपने एक एक टाइप फेस इस्तेमाल किया है एक पैराग्राफ के लिए और दूसरे पैराग्राफ के लिए दूसरा टाइप फेस ये सब चीज़ें नहीं होनी चाहिए आपका जो भी मैसेज है जो भी उसका डिज़ाइन है वो कंसिस्टेंट होना चाहिए ऑल्सो दे शुड बी बैलेंस बिटवीन वॉट यू आर यूजिंग यू कॉन्ट हैव टू मैनी हेडिंग्स एंड नॉट इनफ टेक्सट लुक एट द पेज एंड सी हाउ इट लुक्स विजुअली दैट इज़ इम्पॉर्टेंट Uh, restraint detail what it is that you are using where uh, where are the different elements placed and what is the exact detailing of the visual uh, of the visuals of your page, of your page those are important in the kind of impact that will be made on your audience uh, you will also at the end once you've done all this once you see you've edited for content the organization you've looked at the design then finally you will proofread your uh, message Uh, because that is what really makes your message credible if you at the end have mistakes in your message then or errors spelling errors uh, simple grammatical errors and that seems very sloppy so credibility is affected by your attention to detail and format 
use grammar and spell checks wisely ab to bahut aasani hai zyada tar kaam jo hai wo computer pe hota hai usme grammar checks bhi hote hain spell checks bhi hote hain so always no matter what you do no matter how much of a rush you are in use a spell check and a grammar check so today we learned to edit messages for content and organizational style and readability we learned to choose the most correct word and most effective words to make your point we also looked at how to rewrite sentences to clarify the relationship amongst ideas and to make your writing interesting we learned how to identify the different elements of the paragraph ek paragraph ke kya kya different elements hote hain unka kya maqsad hota hai we also looked at the different designs for written documents how to rewrite paragraphs using appropriate development techniques and uh, that it's important to proofread your message for mechanics and format and with this we come to the end of today's lecture if you have any questions please feel free to email the address is english@vu.edu.pk until next time allah hafiz